It is now 40 minutes past the hour as promised. Want to get you up to date on the meteor shower. If you haven't heard by now, there's a big one tonight. Not uh, that's any different than any other year, but there are some differences from year to year that may make tonight even better. Yeah, really special. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take you to the graphic. We're going to talk about tech and when and what, and then we're going to talk to uh, a friend uh, over at uh, NASA in Huntsville, Alabama. It's going to give us some tips on stargazing tonight and give us some information. But when we're talking about peaks tonight, Thursday morning, so overnight tonight and Thursday morning, and this does occur every August, but kind of the components in place make this year very special. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just go ahead and bring our friend in. We're talking about Bill Cook. He talks with us every once in a while here at uh, Weather Nation and Bill you're the lead at NASA's I gotta read all this because you got a big title buddy <laughs> Yeah, I just do space rocks for a living. <laughs> well, we'll just go with that. Then. <laughs> but you know what? We really do appreciate you joining us. And I think this is something really cool to me. And I think to a lot of our viewers, because we look at it in space every night when we, you know, before we go to bed, and we're so fascinated with space. Tonight's a big night. Let's talk about it. We're talking about the Perseid meteor shower. Yeah, the Perseids occur every year at this time, and tonight is going to be the peak. So if you go outside tonight, you'll see, depending on your skies, anywhere from 60 to 100 meteors per hour. And all you got to do is lie flat on your back and look straight up. No telescopes, no binoculars, just look straight <laughs> up. And that is a great tip. And tell us why this year is a special compared to other years, because this does happen every August. Yeah, well, there's no moon tonight. There's no moonlight to spoil the show. Whenever you have a bright moon in the sky and there's a meteor shower going on, it will wash out the fainter meteors. So tonight you'll see not only bright ones that the Perseids are fainting, Famous for, but you'll see the faint ones as well, and that'll just give you a lot of meteors happening across the sky. Starting, you know, you'll first see Perseids around 10 p.m. local time, and it'll go clean to dawn. And the last time this happened, that they coincided with a new moon or a no moon, if you will, uh, was back in 2007. Just a coincidence. Yeah, just a coincidence. You know, some years we get lucky and there's no moon to mess up the show, and this year is one of them. Okay, so the two things people want to know, say, for example, someone's joining us from Central Time right now, uh, the peak times they need to be outside and the best tips for uh, kind of seeing some of these uh, showers tonight. Well, again, no matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, the best time to start looking is around 10 p.m. local time. You'll start seeing Perseids. The peak rates, though, the best activity will be, you know, from 3 a.m. to dawn. So it's a late night meteor shower. But anybody in the Northern Hemisphere, regardless of your time zone, should be able to see Perseids. And obviously, if you can escape light pollution, that is gonna be the best option okay. there. Okay, you don't wanna be in the middle of a city. I mean, you might see one or two persons <laughs> from the middle of a city, but the lights just kill you there. It's the same reason tonight is going to be good with the moon. You have no moon, so you don't want to waste it by the being in the middle of downtown Atlanta. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right, and I have to tell you, you know, I saw this a few years ago, and I it was in the middle of nowhere, and it was probably one of the coolest things. It's kind of odd, though, uh, kind of give people a heads up that when you look straight up in the sky, you see them out of your peripherals, and all of a sudden you try to look at it, but by the time you look at it, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. They're gone. Happens uh, to me all the time. The Perseids <laughs> yeah. are bits of ice moving at 132,000 miles Ooh. per hour, and at that speed, ice doesn't last very long. It burns up very quick. Not, not at all. I can agree with that. And real quick, we got about 30 uh, to 40 seconds left for you. Uh, what is this caused by? This is caused by debris left behind by a comet called Swift Tuttle that was discovered back in the time of the Civil War in 1862. So what you're seeing are particles kicked off by that comet hundreds and thousands of years ago, and they're finally burning up in the atmosphere tonight. That is so cool. 10 seconds left. I got to ask you, what are you doing tonight? I'll be watching the Perseids. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> hey, Bill, thanks so much for joining us right here at Weather Nation. You're more than welcome. So I got to turn around and ask you now, what are you doing tonight? You know, sleeping or are you going to catch those uh, person? We stay around and we talk about we talk about space weather a lot. We talk about it, and I'm fascinated by it. I have a two and a half year old that hasn't been <laughs> sleeping, so it's questionable as to whether or not I will be up that early. But I would really like to. Listen, if he gets up in the middle of the night, you just step outside. Yeah, not mosey that. outside, <laughs> half asleep. Yeah, really cool stuff there. Sure, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, by the way, coming up here in just about 15 minutes, we're going to continue our conversation. We're talking about the possibility of severe weather across the high plains.